Hi everybody, Dr. Wallace here. In this short video, we're going to talk about the particular parts of the brain that are involved in regulating the autonomic nervous system's fight or flight or rest and digest responses. Whenever we're thinking about the autonomic nervous system, the key player that we always have to take into consideration is the hypothalamus. Let's underline highlight star that the hypothalamus is the big wig, the one, the part that is in control. Now, the hypothalamus, when we talked about it in class, we called it the duck bill down here, regulates different aspects of the autonomic nervous system depending on where we're looking at. So in general, when we're talking about the anterior parts of the hypothalamus, so toward your eyes, the anterior parts of the hypothalamus are really important for your rest and digest functions, the parasympathetic division, Whereas those posterior portions, closer to the back of your, of your brain, those are more involved in the sympathetic functions. So depending on where the activation starts in the hypothalamus, toward the front or toward the back, we can have very different responses. There are many different activities that the autonomic nervous system controls. So a quick reminder that it's very involved in things related to the cardiovascular system. Uh, but the hypothalamus is also very important in regulating your body temperature and maintaining things like the endocrine system or water balance. So the hypothalamus, one of the most important parts of the brain. One thing that can feed into the activation of your various responses is the limbic system. And remember that we called the limbic system the, the emotional brain. So as we become scared, um, as we become excited, those kinds of things can also activate the hypothalamus using the limbic system, which is a group of, of internal structures uh, leading to a more emotional response. We can bring in our memories to this aspect of the response, memories stored in your cerebral cortex. Remember that the cerebral cortex is the thinking part of your brain, the human part of your brain. In addition to our, our conscious thinking parts and emotions changing the way that our hypothalamus is activated, uh, we can also use parts of the brain that are, are subconscious or unconscious, including parts like the brain stem. So remember that the brain stem first includes a region called the medulla oblongata. This medulla oblongata region had a lot of reflexes that it regulated but it was also involved in things uh, like its, its medullary rhythmicity center, setting your heart rate, setting your blood pressure. It's even involved in that GI tract activity. We also have that upper region called the midbrain. The midbrain had those bumps on the backside called the colliculi that were really important in helping you uh, with tracking things or seeing things more clearly. That is a function that the autonomic nervous system is involved in. And internal to uh, the brainstem spreading up into the cerebrum is that reticular activating system, RAS. When you get into a fight or flight situation, uh, as you can think of, for example, the last time somebody cut you off when you were driving, that absolutely activates your sympathetic division of, of the autonomic nervous system. Your heart is racing, you're breathing more quickly all of that because of the reticular activating system getting involved. We do also use the spinal cord in the, the autonomic nervous system. Primarily what the autonomic nervous system is doing through the spinal cord is reflexive activity. Because remember, that's the primary goal of my neurons that live in the spinal cord. So the reflexes that the spinal cord helps with are urination and defecation. Both of these reflexes are controlled by the lower parts of the spinal cord. But a quick reminder for us that we can override some of our, our reflexive activity. And that is true for both the urination and defecation reflexes. You can decide when you're ready to go to the restroom. We can override this kind of, of autonomic nervous system activity. So as we wrap up our discussion of the autonomic nervous system, just a quick reminder for you about the differences and the similarities between them. So on the left, we have the parasympathetic division. That was the rest and digest division. The other way we talked about this one was the cranio, we see cranial here, and sacral, the craniosacral division. 
that tells you where my neurons start that are going out to each of these organs. Remember that with the rest and digest division, we had our ganglia that are right next to or even inside my organs. So my preganglionic neurons are very long. My postganglionic neurons are much shorter. Compare that to my fight or flight division, my sympathetic division. Remember the other way that we talked about fight or flight was the thoraco or thoracic region and lumbar, thoracolumbar division. Notice that these neurons are going to come out of, of the spinal cord in this thoracic to lumbar region. Remember that many of them use these trunk ganglia to synapse with other parts of the body. Some of them used ganglia called collateral ganglia that were a little bit closer to the organs. But remember, in general, the ganglia that are, are closest to my organs are used by the parasympathetic division. Remember that most of my organs that the parasympathetic division talks to are also receiving information from the sympathetic division. It generally tends to be opposite information, but remember that our one exception to that rule was those external genitals that require stimulation from both branches of the nervous system, stimulation that is the same to create the orgasm event.